This is the uh, December 26th meeting of the uh, Conway Board of Selectmen. Starting a little bit late at 6.13 tonight. We're being recorded by <coughs> uh, Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public later on. Uh, first item on the agenda, the minutes for December the 10th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, make a motion that we accept the minutes. Aye. Yes. Okay. I can vote. I wasn't here. So we have a unanimous vote. Okay. The My minutes are an accurate <coughs> reflection of all that went on. Mm -hmm. My next uh, items on the agenda, we have warrants. Um, warrants are particularly heavy at this time of the year because of the end of the year. We have a vendor warrant for seven hundred seventy-eight thousand nine hundred and seventy-seven dollars. A payroll warrant for one hundred eleven thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars, and a payroll deduction warrant of twenty-seven thousand two hundred ten dollars. I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil. Yeah, uh, at this point for the next three months, you can just do the broken record of three meetings per week that are school related. Uh, negotiating committees have started. Budget committees have started. Building renovation committee continues. Policy committee has started. And uh, I'm pretty well tuckered out of school meetings, so it's only December. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay. Bob, you got any? Um, were there any, any, anyway, I went to Adam Hines. Um, he ha had his um, office hours here in Conway right. last week, and uh, and so to some extent the meeting was a lot. Well, there were a lot of people there interested in in the Conway garage, talking to him about the Conway garage. So, and uh, that's about all. Okay. Um, okay, we had a uh, <coughs> Franklin County Chamber of Commerce breakfast uh, last week. Oh, no, two weeks ago now. Yeah, the 18th, December 18th. Um, we presented at that meeting a proclamation to former Conway resident Dave Chichester. Uh, he was uh, selected by the chamber as the citizen of the year for uh, 2018. And we were part of the, uh, the celebration. Um, and we, we did a proclamation for Dave uh, declaring December 18th Dave Chichester Day here in Conway. Uh, many of you know Dave because of his voice on the 911 uh, emergency system that we use when we have to get information out to residents uh, quickly. Uh, and <clears throat> Dave was also our emergency management director during the, uh, uh, the tornado uh, that we had on February 25th, 2017. He did a great job during that, that situation, and we certainly miss him here in Conway. So, but it was, a, it was quite a good event. How many people do you think were there? 250, 300? More, more, more than that, yeah. It was down at Deerfield Academy, very well attended, and uh, really a, a great tribute to Dave. It was um, a good Conway night. Mary McClintock nominated Dave and gave a long speech about him and reflected probably everybody's ideas in the room who said, I read the recorder this morning and had no idea of all the things Dave did. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even Mary, who nominated him, said that. So it was a good article in the recorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a very good event. And we were happy to see Dave, Dave get that uh, honor. Okay, next item on the agenda, we have uh, public comments. Is there anyone here for public comment? That would be us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Bigley, what do we have? Yes. Um, well, I guess uh, we're here to discuss the horse problem on Main Poland Road. Um, there's been incidents, many incidents, some of which we have recorded and noted the time and day, others that happened before we started to actually record them. Mostly it's um, the horses were out on the road a lot. There were three horses. And then after about a week or 10 days of that, they started to come up to our property. And I think they went up to Gordon's as well. Yeah. Um, 
we had about, we have them written down, but it's, you know, just roughly in the span of nine days, we had seven visits that we saw the horses, and other mm -hmm. times we saw tracks or deposits. Um, so it felt like for maybe seven or eight days, we were, you know, definitely under siege. I mean, I understand that what happens to our personal property happens, but I think the larger issue is the safety issue of having the horses loose on the road. Mm -hmm. So we're basically here to see what the plan is going forward, <coughs> what we can do, what the time frame is. Um, I, I know I know that uh, Joe Colucci, uh, our animal control officer, and our chief, uh, Ken, we met, have been uh, consulting on this. Ken, do you have anything on that? Well, most recently, I had um, Viglianis write a letter. Uh, I informed them that there is a criminal statute that we could enforce. Uh, it would require them writing a letter first, addressing it to the owners of the domestic animals, mm -hmm. which they did. That letter was delivered in hand. And to my knowledge, we have not had any incidents since then. So we're hopeful that this may have been what they needed to. When when was delivered the, uh, the letter delivered? Uh, last Saturday, I believe it was. Last Saturday. So actually Saturday before. Okay, so a week ago this Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Has has have there been any problems since since that situation? I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure if it was the night that you delivered that letter it was that the we next took day. the picture. It was the next day. You went up the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So I think since then we have not seen the horse on our property. But like Paul said, that's one small issue in this larger concern of very real danger on the road because the horses sometimes are out in daylight and often lately in, in the dark. And I'm sorry that Carol and Ralph are not here because Carol, who lives up the road from us, who goes to work at 4.30 in the morning, said one morning she very nearly hid the brown horse as it was making its way over that single lane bridge on a semi-blind curb that separates where the horses live and where the Mobies are, we are, the direction that the horses often take. And another morning, Paul was getting the paper before 7 a.m. out of our tube down on the road, and one of the horses was trying to pull into our driveway, and the school bus was speeding down the hill and had to brake. These are just two examples of an accident, a really bad accident, waiting mm -hmm. to happen. Now, have the horses been in the road since, <coughs> since uh, that letter was delivered, do we know? I haven't seen them. To my knowledge, we've had no calls on them since then. Okay, and you're, you're monitoring the situation with, with Joe, yeah. and, and there's, there's sufficient force in this statute that the, uh, the offenders will listen to it? Well, it would, it would require them going to court to answer for the complaint. <coughs> so I think that in itself has been enough to have them take some sort of action. <coughs> Okay. So, so that's the primary consequence of them not uh, heeding the letter? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so can I, because um, I'm, I'm a horse owner, I've been a horse owner all my life, and I actually had friends in New Jersey that had horses that escaped, got on the New Jersey Turnpike, a terrible accident, somebody was actually paralyzed as a result. <clears throat> and friends lost their homes, all their money, and relocated to Indonesia. <laughs> um, seriously. And... Um, and the, when and I, I, I drove up there and I saw that it's a single strand barbed wire fence. And to me, no matter how well maintained a single strand barbed wire fence is, it is not, especially with larger horses, mm -hmm. that um, if there's a good bit of grass there, they will, they will take the, they'll, they'll puff up and they'll take the shock mm -hmm. to, 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 to get that mouthful. Yeah. And um, to me, the solution is, um, encouraging the owner to get a two strands of barbed wire fence, which is just actually not very, it's using the same fence poles, just put another one on top. And, and it's not expensive, it's not that. 
so to me, that's the that's what I that's like the outcome that would prevent all of this, and the way that you would go about getting it, um, and it is through a consent order or a consent agreement with them, that now that there is an actual threat of a criminal violation, this is what the town would like to get done, and the animal control officer would handle would present that, but that this is what the town would like to get done, this is what you're agreeing to do, and then we'll hold off on a, on a summons, that kind of a thing. I don't know whether that's ever been presented to you, but that's kind of the way. I would prefer to take them right to court as soon as it's violated. These are repeat offenders. I get that, I get that, I know. Paul and I have lived in the neighborhood over 30 years, and this is essentially the third time in 30 years that this the horse, horse, horse loose come. problem has come up, and I think it's more than an issue of single strand versus double strand. I think it, Irresponsible ownership, possibly improper feeding. Um, you know, the horses don't look well cared for. They look fairly neglected. All right. Oh, so the, so the, right. MS, the MSPCA has been there on past occasions. The mm -hmm. every time they've been up there recently, there has been food. Uh, I can't make that call, but okay. I know from my experience in the past. To solve the problem at that residence, usually court action does solve the problem. All right, so right now we have the letter delivered. There has been any problem since the letter's been delivered, and they understand there'll be court action taken if there are offenses further on. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's um, let's say that if there if there is any more offense, then then we'll go to the court on. Huh? I have all a question. Right. Um, it seems to me that all of this action, possible court action and all of that is centered on whether or not the horses come up to our property. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Because we wrote that letter. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering if the horses were to get out and be on the road and pose that safety issue that we're all talking about, where is the legality of that? Where's the liability there? That's why you call the 911 and have him come up there. That's what, I mean, the road is the big, it's it's leaving the property that is the offense. It's not going onto your property that's the offense. Well, so both. But is that the way the law works? Technically, that's not true. In no. Chapter 266, yeah. right. 118, it's the trespassing on private property. Uh, it is right. the offense. So we could all write letters, mm. but if they're, that, but they could but still if they're be in, in the road, road, they're in the road, right? So, I mean, well, then, what? If, if the horses are in the road, then, then it would be up, up to us to take action on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, quite honestly, and I explained this to Paul and Alice Vigliani, um, if I went through all the recordings of the complaints we get, not complaints necessarily, but calls to respond to large animals in the road, it's, it's constant, mm -hmm. whether it be cows, whether it be horses, whatever. This is, that's not uncommon in mm -hmm. this area. Yeah. Um, so I, I really do believe that they're, if they get out, I believe that they will be going to your residence because that's what they know. Yes. Right. And so I think if they get out again, they are going to be Yeah, or if line. they come to our, our yard, it would be the same thing, even though the Viglianis wrote the yeah. letter. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Basically, and you, know, you can check with an attorney if you want, but as long as they've been made aware, verbally or in writing, of the no trespass order, it will stand up. And they have been made aware. Okay. I, I just like to say that I can really feel it's a public safety issue with people who come to our house to help with my son. Mm -hmm. and, and I traveled myself in the night just about a week and a half ago, home from probably Christmas shopping, and it was pitch black. And I'm coming down the hill past Spigliani's, and there's the two horses coming up the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm just poking along. I'm not heading down that hill fast, and a lot of people do travel fast. That could have been a terrible accident. Mm -hmm. And I worry about people who travel back and forth to my home in the dark. and. I feel like if someone were to be act an accident happened, the town would be held liable for whatever happened, because it's pub our public ways, and that would cost the town an awful lot of money if someone were to be hurt or killed because they hit one of these animals. I do believe you'd find out that that would be a civil lawsuit for the owners of the animals. Oh, mm -hmm. the town couldn't don't be held accountable. No. Don't you think? Uh, I don't believe it. What about a municipal lawyer? 
I mean, a real hot shot municipal lawyer. The, the town would not be held liable in that situation. Really? Right. So I'm one the of the 13. Of the animals. I hear what you're saying. I just would have thought that the town would have had some, because there was a record of every time someone called the town. If a lawyer went and looked and said, but the town was notified to the dispatch office this many times because the animals were, were loose mm -hmm. and the animal control officer was called this many mm -hmm. times because these animals were loose, that the town wouldn't have any liability or responsibility, well, even though? We, we've responded and notified the owners that the animals were out. They had got the animals. They've been served with the notice of no trespassing. So it's not like we haven't done anything. Okay. Somehow, well, I, I just wonder if a lawyer would still see it that way if they were pursue if someone were, were were fatally harmed i just think that if it were someone that i knew who, who were if my son or someone was killed in my family mm -hmm. what lengths they might go to to remediate that loss i think that you're saying it will just be a civil suit but i wonder if that really is a, if it happened in your family i mean if this happens in your family people will go to whatever lengths they feel that will make it yeah, you know, justified that mm -hmm. they... I understand what you're saying. But. How easy would it be to institute a bylaw addressing large animals of any sort? I don't know, maybe you have to specify cows, horses, whatever else in Conway you know of getting calls of. Specify a bylaw that if such animals get out on the public highways, the owners are subject to X, Y, Z, and maybe base it on the statute that Ken had us <coughs> write this letter on, a fine, maybe a criminal offense. All right, well, we're, we're a long way from, from doing a bylaw like, like that. What we're concerned about right now is the fact that the horses are no longer bothering you, okay? Is that, that's, yeah, the, case, that's the case yeah, it is week. now, okay? Right. And, and, and <laughs> our chief is monitoring it our animal control officer is monitoring it. If there are any other problems with the horses on your property, then the, we, we take action in court, okay? okay. Uh, we'll investigate those other matters of the horses being, or other animals being on, on public ways, all right? Yeah. What, what happens if they're out again? I, I, I mean, I'm wondering about you what the law the does. Or <coughs> you call the police and then yeah. what? I mean, what, what action would we be taking with them? Then we, would, then we would have the criminal complaint. And then would the, they would have to go to court. Be removed from their property? That or? would be up to the court. Uh -huh. The court makes that determination. We had a case with a problem animal at that residence years ago, and ultimately they were ordered to be removed from town. So. I mean, that's a real, that's a good threat. I mean, that's, My understanding you know, is I don't have first-hand knowledge of this because I haven't been up there. I just found this out today that one of the problem horses has been removed. It is no longer at the residence. So in the meantime, if, and I, I think this is a problem in cold weather. It began when the weather turned cold. Mm -hmm. The horses seem to be wanting to look for something to graze on when they come up to our place. They're not just milling around. Um, so we're, they seem to be kept under control as of the letter that Paul and I wrote, but what happens a month from now if we have a polar freeze and the horses are out on the road, but not we'll, on our we'll, property? We'll take care of that if it, if it happens. Call 911. Yeah. Yeah. 911. Yeah. Like if I'm driving down the road with my kids to school and I see them, I'd call 911? Yeah, absolutely. Not they do, Joe, it, all, they not do Joe it all Colucci? the time. Okay. Not Joe Colucci? That wouldn't be the first call. No. I mean, I would call 911 first. Yeah, it happens all the time. And I'm curious if they have their electricity shut off and that's how the horses are getting out or if it's when, the fence. When the, when the, the food. ACO was up there, he had a tester and it there was electricity on the fence. Probably if they had their electricity shut off, then it would be for a long period of time, and you'd know it. A solar charger is almost the same price as the electric charger now. So fences, this, the solar thing for a fence is, is this big, and you can, they actually had one at the dump not that long ago for free. Oh, but, wow. Um, Damn. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's, you know, and those, even if you buy them brand new, they're like under 50 bucks. So I'm not, the, the, the no electric thing is not 
dispositive for me at all. It's like you gotta still. I'm just curious why they're always getting out. You know, if it's a food or a fence issue or electricity Cause, issue. Cause or horses, once they do it once, and once they see that the grass on the other right. side really is greener, yeah, then they, right. they do it again. It's it's a learned behavior, and the you know if you just keep going at them with the same single strand, the it's not enough. All right, we're going to continue to monitor the situation, okay. uh, and uh, thank you for coming in. All right, thank you. Any other problems? Let us know. One more point. Um, during the period when the horses were coming up to our place almost every day or every night, um, we always called Joe. And I think after the first time, Joe said he wasn't going to bother to go up there because they don't come to the door. The, the woman who lives in the first house doesn't let anyone be on there on his, on his property. So we were frustrated that following the system, of calling the animal control officer wasn't really getting us very much satisfaction because he wasn't going up there and he was saying, plus, they don't pay me enough to drive up there all the time. Just be aware of that. That was a frustration for us. But at the same time, we are aware of what Joe faces when he goes up there. And just as that being one example of some of the calls that he probably has to go out on, we admire him for what he does, and we realize it's not a very pleasant job, and we think that he probably should be paid more than he's paid. And so please right, take well, that in, into consideration in, in the, when in, you're you know, budgeting for him for yeah, next year, because in, he does do a good job. In the, in the situation we have before us, Ken is involved, our police chief is involved, the situation will be taken care of, and, and we'll, we'll consider that in uh, in the future budget all right okay. thank you for coming in all right thank, thank you, you. take right. care mr Mulder. thank you thank you mr good to see you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. is take care <laughs> good luck good thank you. Right there in the <laughs> Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. Yeah. We just talked about this. Like, well, now we're talking about this week. Too. Tom, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Excellent, excellent okay. Christmas. Yes, nice and quiet. I'll be right back too. Just what sure. Kenny said. What's that? I said that's just what Kenny said. Huh. He said in his both of his lives yeah, have worked. That's good news. Uh, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come in. Come in. There's chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> now we got him in. That's, that's the enticement. That's the enticement. Hey, Dave. Hi. Hi, all. Mm. Hey, Dave. Good, good, comfy, comfy chair back there. Uh oh. There's mm -hmm. another comfy chair over here that will be on TV all the time. Hi. Good night. All right. Next, next item on our agenda is old business uh, considered draft marijuana host agreement policy. Tom, what do we have on that? Uh, last time we just we just barely uh, went through. The final uh, um, application policy that the town of Buckland had come up with, and uh, Bob uh, read that out, um, substituting Conway for Buckland and and all of that because this is this uh, just recently passed the town of Buckland, and so it's the sort of the most comparable uh, policy for host agreements that um, we have available to us now. I had um, copied and uh, made those changes to an earlier version of what the town of Buckland had come up with, which mm -hmm. is probably not really under consideration right now. We should probably start from where uh, Buckland left off. And Joe Stragowski, there's a third page you mm -hmm. have on this, he had um, asked that uh, under the first section having to do with the community outreach meeting um, that we uh, that we have that include a discussion of 
how it uh, would comply with um, the zoning bylaw article 11 mm -hmm. uh, on on marijuana and and if it would require a deviation from that uh, previously we we had uh, that that would have been under the second section which was in their application they would include that information but Joe wanted that also discussed at the community outreach meeting mm -hmm. so he made that um, proposed amendment uh, so, where the, so there would be a couple of items added under number one where it would comply where it wouldn't comply uh, right. with our current zoning uh, so that's that's where we are so uh, really um, where we left it was the uh, town of Buckland uh, effective November 21st 2018 but everything changed from Buckland to Conway and Falls Cable changed to FCAT Mohawk Trail changed to Frontier right uh, and I think those were the only uh, have, have changes. We, have we reached out to uh, FERCOG, for an example, of a um, host agreement? Also, have, uh, we, have we reached out to David Lakeman at the Cannabis Control? Yes, not um, a host agreement. First, yes, uh, this is not a host agreement. This is how the town would like to receive host agreement applications. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a step back from any uh, particular host agreement. That's where you would get in negotiating um, specifics regarding traffic and parking and, and mm -hmm. hours of operation, lighting, odor, all of those things. Pesticide use. This is, this is more the process to, to go um, to make sure that that application um, is is uh, in order when it's presented. Okay. Is there a cannabis control commission example for for what this is though? Not that I found. No. Uh, no. This is uh, uh, again. They've been focusing on the host agreements right. themselves, right, right. and and the difficulties there have come because, because towns have tried to ask for more than uh, some people feel is allowed by state law. Are there other? I thought I thought we were going to also see at this meeting today. <coughs> Examples from Deerfield, examples from Waitley, examples from some of the other. Well, we have it. We we can have examples of host agreements, but I don't no, know no, examples of any of other this. Um, application policy, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't been a, I haven't been able to find any. Okay. So I I can continue to look, and I will continue to look. I'll make a note of that. And, uh, we have a a, a, com a question, a comment uh, that is attempted. If the chair could recognize the uh... Thomas. <laughs> what do we have? I'm, I'm happy to provide one or two from other towns like Deerfield and Whaley. Uh, I'd really love to see some other town agreements. Uh, are, are they from uh, around uh, here? Uh, uh, or Deerfield and Whaley are around here. Oh, they, they have something similar to this then? Yeah, everybody has something similar. Everybody has a sheet that says mm -hmm. you have to um, do X, Y, and Z. You and know, I, I asked Whaley and they, and they said they didn't have one. Well, Deerfield certainly has one. Sure. Um, yeah. So, you know, Buckland obviously has one. Buckland's is particularly strange, and it's the only town in the area that has money up front applied. And I'm here to speak about that to the extent you want to speak about that. But if, in fact, you want to attract people, that is incredibly off putting. No other town has money up front like that. They have a special permit. When you apply for a special permit, there's X dollars that uh, are going to your special permit. Mm -hmm. But there's really uh, no work that goes into accepting an application. Mm -hmm. And so why you would take money, even if you're going to return it at the end, is a little beyond me. And $5,000 is a chunk of money mm -hmm. for people sure. who are just beginning. I think the uh, the idea was that that would be for legal review, and again, this would be for, and and I'm sure that there there could be uh, this is this is certainly a great area of discussion and and uh, potential flexibility. Um, this policy would have to cover any operation that came in, not just a small cultivation operation. So this would also have to cover the maximum size. Um, Retail, the maximum size cultivation, the max, maximum size manufacturing facility as well. So, um, 
this isn't um, I certainly intended to keep people out, but it is intended to make sure the town doesn't bear the burden of the legal review for the the uh, sort of worst case pot or the, <coughs> the maximum impact application. Well, that has that has to do. Uh, I I I put in an application. I I do community outreach, and then I come before the town afterwards, and I say, okay, I want to get a host community agreement. And you say, I am the worst case example, and this could take a lot of work. Well, that's part of the negotiation of the host community agreement. It's not a front, not an application fee. <coughs> and people do, I mean, Deerfield, in fact, doesn't charge when they have their lawyer do it, but it's part of the percentage in the host community agreement, which covers all the costs. By statute, it's theoretically so supposed to. And by regulation, three percent. It's, it's supposed to cover the cost mm -hmm. up to up to three percent. Yeah. In addition to the to the tax money the town gets, mm -hmm. you know, um, some towns are fifty nine percent, some towns are fifty two percent, some towns if it's a small cultivator are differentiating that between that and in retail, which is in my opinion totally appropriate. Or yeah, I was going to say I think that's where the flexibility can or, come. But in. but that cost comes later. Okay, that cost comes with a lawyer reviewing a host community agreement, and in fact, what you're going to do is you're going to have, you're going to get five host community agreements, and I'd be happy to send them to you too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, the model one, there's Deerfield, there's Waitley, there's Hatfield, there's different towns mm -hmm. that have all their different host community agreements, and you're going to cut and paste yours together, and yeah, you're going to run it by a lawyer who's going to look at it. And after that, it's going to be the one you buy in large use. Mm -hmm. And you're sure. going to put in retail or cultivation, and you're going to put in a percentage. And it's not going to be much change. Are, are, the, are they different between a grower or a retail shop? The host deer it's like deer they, it's identical. They are. It, it just, it's just kind of how you figure out how much money we're getting and when we figure that out. It's usually at the end of the year. When you have a track record, and after that, it's quarterly. You don't pay up front; you pay at the end of the year. And so, it's just a sort of a payment plan, <coughs> as much as anything. Those community agreement. Hmm. Okay. So when, when when this was broached a couple of weeks ago, uh, and when 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 you said, "What about that? That five thousand is a little bit steep." But I'm just paraphrasing what you said. But um, the since then, I saw the. Uh, in the, my, a bulletin that I got that the state had authorized the towns to, besides the 3.5%, whatever, there was another 3% or 3.5% for municipal impact fees or whatever. Which is what he's, and, he's and so I thought that that's the legal. And, you know, and now right. that I know that yeah. that exists, I think maybe that uh, I can sort of agree that the 5000 up front seems a little bit steep perhaps, but... Um, when I read this, I thought that this was just a way of keeping the tire kickers out of the process because once once anybody signs off on stuff like uh, applies for this, it sets off work for a lot of people. And if someone's not real serious about it or really doesn't have their ducks lined up anyway and was just kicking tires, this would this would uh, uh, keep keep that from happening. But that's what I saw its purpose being. Well, I I don't I don't, I don't think I think somebody is going to apply is going to have to come back to you for a host community agreement. They're going to have to come back to the planning board for a special permit. They're going to have to spend a significant amount of money, and those are just preliminary going to the Cannabis Control Commission. And other towns, it's not like Conway is especially open, let's say. I mean, Waitley, Deerfield, you can cultivate anywhere. You know, you can't necessarily retail anywhere, but you can cultivate anywhere. And there's special permits, so because there's special permits, you can only cultivate, in a, you're only going to be able to do retail in a particular area of Conway anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, this plant port is not going to say, you, no, you don't get it as a matter of right. A special permit to me means that it's special, and you have to meet certain requirements. And one of them has to do with location. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be limited. So I don't, I don't, I don't think people are going to be flocking to Conway for any particular reason, 
other than maybe they own land here, they want to be here, they think it's a nice town and they want to try some cultivation. Those are really good reasons. They are, they are, but I mean, if you want to, if you want flat land and you want to do something that's uh, tier 10 or 11, you're not, you're not going to, you're unlikely to be in Conway. I don't think our bylaw goes up that It doesn't, high. but it could be a good grant of variance, okay? Grant var variances are potentially, it only goes up to tier two, I think, um, and it goes up to 10,000 square feet. That's just you're for hard the, to prove a hard in, that's just for the building, <laughs> not for outdoor. Right. Yeah. It'd be hard to prove a hardship. <laughs> but that's all right. No, a variance, yeah. a variance doesn't have to do with yeah. that in this context. Mm -hmm. It's not a land it's not a land variance. It, it makes sense for the town, you know. But so so I, I, I see this as a as a as a sort of prepayment under the under the three percent. And you know, one one sort of middle path would be to say that you know, some some lesser amount for a smaller operation would be counted as part of um, the, uh, the a, a community impact fee um, during negotiations. So but you're, you're not so going to do that till you get to the. You're not going to do any work until there's a host community agreement negotiated with mm -hmm. the person who's the applicant. No work is going to be done just because a person holds a community impact meeting, okay? They're gonna come before you and they're gonna say, we wanna negotiate an agreement with you. Now, I'll, I'll be surprised if you don't have an agreement yourselves that you feel comfortable with, okay? That you're gonna be your model agreement, mm -hmm. which has already been worked out. Um, theoretically, the percentage that's the community impact percentage that you're talking about is supposed to bear a relationship to what the town actually expends. But that's the 3% sure. that sure. would up be in the host agreement. Up, 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 up to 3%. Percent. Percent. But I didn't see that in the yeah. statute itself, in the proposed statute, or in the statute that the governor is expected to, the revision to it that the governor is expected to sign within 10 days. I, I looked, I did not see that there, there was any sort of means or truth or or it, it just said. Oh, there is. It's a. It's it's in it's in it's in the statute itself that sets it up. That's been the whole dispute that people have been actually asking for more than that number, and also that it, it has no relationship to anything. And so some of the applicants are saying that's just kind of, you know, just trying to take our money because we want to be here. No, I mean it isn't. It isn't there, and I'm happy to send that too. You know. All right. It's not. All right. Well, we're we're in the process of, of considering, you know, policy for this, and uh, we've we've taken uh, Joe Stragowski's comments uh, from the planning the planning board, and we'll integrate those into this and come up with something um, relatively shortly. And I'll, I'll send you Deerfield. That would be great. Yeah. And I'll send you some host community agreements too. Yeah, I, I've got plenty of them. Oh, you have. But, those. but you know, no, whatever I, I you have, do it. you know, please send them sure. along. Yeah. 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 Because so. they put a fair amount of work into it. Oh sure. It's yeah. Did Waitley. Yeah. Yeah. And most most towns, uh, I mean, Deerfield does have a one-page printout. Most towns don't because. There's nothing to do until somebody comes before the board and says, I'd like to operate within your town. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then, and then you work out a host community agreement. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I believe I have Deerfields and, and, and I can get it anyway. So. That one, the one pager. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, like it lays out like this, what's expected? What, what it says you, you should do a community outreach. Right. Right, you know, you you have to go before the the plant. There, there, there is EBA. I think in their case, um, you know, you have to get a host community for the special together. Plans. You know, it lays out the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's EBA would do the special permit. I think there's EBA <coughs> doing the special permit. The EBA yeah. is definitely doing the special permit, but not their planning board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, obviously varies from town to town. In Conway, it's the play of war. Okay. I know from, I mean, the, I saw the city of Salem's 
post agreement, and that includes the dispensary paying for the school psychologist to seventy eight thousand dollars every year. Yeah. Um, so I know that there's a wide range uh, of clauses that are in effect across the state, and I know um, I know we're also Conway, not Salem. Yeah, Salem was looked a little extreme. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, were there any other aspects of this that you had any particular insights on or comments on? You know, I looked at I looked at it very quickly, and I'll, I'll, I'll email you if I think I have any others tomorrow. Okay. That'd be sure. great. But that was the one that leapt out at me. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it left out. Yes. <laughs> I just never <laughs> seen anything future like that before. As you know? well. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank Thanks. you, Tom. Good to see y'all. Good to see you. Phil, yeah. good, to see you. Leah, good to see you. Leah, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, and I'll email you tomorrow. Yeah. Or yeah. we'll shortly thereafter. Maybe Monday. Take your time. Person who does that. Yeah. Take your time. It's the holiday season. Take your time. <laughs> she is out. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda is to assign a voting delegate for the Maya luncheon at the MMA annual meeting. I will I will nominate Tom to be our representative at that meeting, as he has been for the last 20 years. Or <laughs> no. okay. Do I have a second on that? I'd second that. All right. Ed, all in favor? Aye. Sure. Okay. I and I'll still um, strongly advocate, enthusiastically advocate, people attending the MMA annual See, conference. That's what my colleagues in the Sunderland and Waitley board are trying to tell me too. I looked at the workshop schedule, it's just the afternoon for a couple hours on each day that they actually have workshops and the rest of it looked like boring meetings. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> if you find meetings boring. Uh, I, I will be there. Sometimes they're in as usual. I'll be there. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is oh, to vote, vote on the uh, on the policy, the MMA policy statements for the annual meeting in January. I'll, I'll just mention that uh, the first one is consistent with uh, one that they have every year. They've tweaked it a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think they're really emphasizing uh, charter school funding revisions. In this one, which is good. The second one, um, they they focus on different uh, topics uh, in different years, and this year they're focusing on recycling because of the crashing market due to China's not accepting our dirty recyclables anymore. They just weren't good enough for China, and uh, so the market's crashing, which means that um, the waste stream is starting to grow as people stop recycling. So um, we need, uh, we need uh, some serious thought and action on the state level. So those are the, those are the two. One is, one is generally ways that the state can help towns, and there's, it's, a, it's a laundry list. And just the second one focuses on recycling. Just to let you know, uh, Tom and I were deeply involved in the, uh, the MMA retreat to uh, consider these policy statements, and, and we we helped formulate them. So well, they're, they're good. They're in, really the, good. in the first one, I saw that there was a paragraph, whereas we're worried about us becoming too reliant on property taxes as revenue. I think we've long passed the point where we're worried about it, and it's time to protest that it's occurred and that it's crippling us, and we need to add like more income tax to the mix of funding. I think I think that's that is where they're going with it. The one thing that I would suggest also is that you know they ask for Chapter 90 funding like they always do, um, but despite a recent um, uh, bold move to actually um, bring it up to date, I, they're still setting it at 300 million, which is more than the 200 million that it's likely to be funded at. Um, but uh, 300 million was at one point the uh, the point at which the state would fund half and the towns would fund half of the existing need. Well, the need since then has gone up to 680 million a year. So we really should be asking for 340 million if that was going to be an equal partnership. And um, uh, I am just putting that forward, especially so John hears that now as I was reading through it and thinking back at the discussion at the Local Government Advisory Commission 
uh, where um, uh, I think the lieutenant governor accepted in principle that there should be, uh, you know, some uh, some attention paid to that. If you, if you stay at three hundred million forever, then prices go up, and pretty soon you don't have the same the same buying power. Um, so I would actually um, like to bring up maybe at the board meeting or, um, you know, worst case on the floor, uh, that that be raised to $340 million. But I, I just thought I'd mention that mm -hmm. that here because that would represent an equal e equal burden for, for roads and bridges between the state and the towns. Mm -hmm. Last year it was the $200 million. So. It's been funded at two hundred million for a long time. They've asked for three hundred million yeah, for a long right. time, once because of an excess in state budget, in the state budget uh, revenues. We got it bumped up to three hundred million, and we got an extra <coughs> um, was it forty million yeah. this year because of of extra revenue that came in. But this is an ongoing need, and uh, cities and towns are not able to keep up, especially rural cities and towns. Yeah. For which it represents a great expense with little um, tax base to pay for it. Yeah, that's all good. I agree with that. I would also note that if they actually do go after the the Chapter 70, bringing the Chapter 70 up to up to uh, the 21st century, oh, oh, we would benefit. That was that we was, would benefit so much. That was one of the top items on uh, you know the retreat for making out these policies was was Chapter 70 funding and. Mm -hmm. And the foundation budget, and you know, changing things so that they're more equitable, especially to the towns out here in the West. See. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the top ago. in the top three considerations of the MMA every year is is that situation. Um, okay, so um, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the MMA policy statements to be voted on in the January uh, annual meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda is to consider raising the credit limit on the highway department account. Tom? Um, you know, the highway department has the largest budget of the town. It's, substanti it's substantially larger than others, and that's because they deal with um, a lot of material and a lot of equipment. And now they're in charge of building maintenance as well. Uh, and they had originally been set at the same uh, level as all other departments at uh, $2,000, um, with the treasurer having $5,000 uh, authority. Mm -hmm. And um, the highway supervisor has recently uh, approached that limit. Mm -hmm. And uh, rather than... Um, Rather than uh, create an unnecessary bureaucratic roadblock to getting things done that are going to get done anyway, um, uh, we're proposing having him have the same uh, credit limit as the uh, treasurer. And, and Jan is fine with it? She is. Yeah. Um, okay. there, there are workarounds. He could go through her credit card. Um, but, you know, he comes in on Friday afternoons, and she's not in on Friday. That's when he does the majority of his, his uh, office work, um, though he does it throughout the week. But um, it's, um, he's, he's, he's going to order the things one way or another. And since we have this capability, um, and since he can spend that much anyway without it being a capital expense, then mm -hmm. we thought... Well, make him equal to the treasurer in that because he has a far larger department and buys a lot of stuff. Yeah, right. that's, that's I, I thought that there. I thought that it would be better if that there's some requirement that he that there's advance approval from somebody else, and that like either you or Jan or somebody else should should still have, even if it's telephonic or email approval, that. Um, that there should still be a further check on the ability to, to spend money and obligate the town. Uh, Not to say that that's true of anybody in any department, but... Um, um, but I, did you get a copy of the uh, credit I, card policy? Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty tight, um, just so you know. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot that's the responsibility of the employee. Um, and um, 
you know, maybe maybe uh, if he's going to go over that two thousand dollar limit, I, I can see that. Right now, this is just it's just part of doing your job. You know, everybody makes these small smaller procurements yeah. on their own. I, I I get all that, and we don't want to. There's a difference though between the you know getting paper clips and pencils and getting a forty nine hundred dollar doohickey that you know whatever. And I don't really but. It's just that that be you're getting close to where it's real money, and that there should be someone else knowing about it and saying, "Yeah, go ahead, do it." Um, I'm I'm happy to take that on. Uh, let's say okay. over over two thousand when he when he gets over two thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so is that an amendment to this policy then? Are we? Is it the, yeah. Going to make that amendment? I'll I'll uh, I'll write something up and have that for next time. Okay. okay. Good. All right, uh, Tom, schedule budget meetings uh, for other major and town departments. This looks basically the same as last year. Uh, yeah, it just, it just lays out um, <coughs> pretty much our lives with the board. I love that it was all Mondays. That's really the only day I have. <laughs> And uh, yeah. it's seriously, if, if we are going to do anything that will require my being there besides a Monday, please let me know long in advance this school. How about a Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, no, this, the only reason this is possible is because the, 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 the tank liner in the school is being replaced. Yeah, I so, was uh, going to mention that. Yeah, so, so all those things are, you can't use that building this week, so oh. I'm free tonight on a rare, rare occasion. Uh, so what I, what I wanted to say especially was, um, these are the departments we usually hear from. Mm -hmm. If there if there's anybody else you want to hear from, uh, let me know, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll set up a meeting. These are the, you know the public works, public safety, financial things, my office, uh, the schools. The Franklin County Technical School uh, called a long time ago and wanted to set up a meeting, mm -hmm. and they had some times that were available. And the way it it ended up was Monday, January 28th, was the best date for everybody. Okay. Uh, so that's why they're, they're scheduled there. And then, you know, we, we can fill that out with um, other departments, boards, committees. But I put, um, so highway came first, um, the public safety, that's police, fire, ambulance, mm -hmm. not planning to ask emergency management or animal control or no. the tree warden, um, as those are relatively minor budgets, uh, but also the Board of Health. Um, that's usually a, a relatively chunky presentation. The um, uh, public safety usually doesn't change much year to year, but it's nice to check in with people. So. Uh, I think that's a that's a full meeting there, and then I had the next meeting January twenty first is more administration and finance, mm -hmm. the treasurer, treasurer collector, the uh, board of assessors, and my own budget. Uh, so that was that's the uh, that's the majority of it, and then I've also set in here not not just budget things, but but um, uh, I. I I set one aside for non-capital special money articles in case, and I think there will be some of those. Mm -hmm. um, that's, for one thing, where highway borrowing would come in. Um, and uh, preliminary school budgets, I put down for February 18th. Right. That, that's, yeah. that's pretty much yeah. when... We first talk about it in January, but there's so few yeah. numbers in January. Yeah. In February is when it's first, just in March is when it's voted. Yeah. Usually. Mm -hmm. So preliminary and informal. Um, I usually um, come out with my budget uh, the last Monday in February. And um, then we um, can look at the budget as a whole. Uh, beginning of March with um, the final warrant submissions, closing the warrant, and beginning the recommendations on the various warrant articles on Monday, March 11th. We get the school budget, budget presentation I have here on March 18th. Yeah. Um, 
talk about the budget as a whole with the school in it, talk about the warrant as a whole the next week after that, uh, and signing the warrant the uh, first Monday in April. That gives us two weeks to get it printed and mailed so that people can have it two weeks before mm -hmm. um, uh, town meeting. And if you'll notice, there's there's an extra week in there just in case. Yeah, yeah, good, good flexibility. So, so in adopting this, this also means starting January 7th, we'll meet every week. Yeah, uh, and I'm, over there, and mm -hmm. probably the Finance Committee will be meeting with us on mm -hmm. all of these Great. so that the departments don't have to present twice. Yeah. And everybody gets the same information, here's the same answers, ask, knows who, you know, here's all the questions, here's all the answers. Yeah. And the complication with the school stuff this year, of course, is the collective bargaining. We need to actually come to a bargain before we can do the budget. Well, we can always well, make well, a uh, numbers in it. highest cost budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that looks yeah. that I can give you updates on that, but that has to be in an executive session. So. Yeah, the schedule looks fine, Tom. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions on the schedule? Okay, good. All right, next item on the agenda. Our yes. joint meeting with personnel. <laughs> Susan, thank oh, you for Tom, coming nice in. You. Uh, David, Tom, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Bob, 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 how are you? Sir? A joint meeting. This is the way to start off. Yeah. 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 You're going to talk about marijuana again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the gift she won this day after Christmas is the handbook, and that's okay. and I believe there are oh, okay. copies. Yeah, great. Um, and as chair, I just want to say something from the outset that this represents a lot of work. Uh, it's obvious, and it's really well done. Well, it's really, really impressive. It, it is. A, it's a real handbook, and I think when one realizes that the lat that this represents five years after the first handbook was done. So it should have been updated before that. It was not. And that meant a lot of work for the people involved here. And I just want to say very frankly as chair that it has been a remarkable team. And Susan representing the voice of not only reason, but the law. Deep uh, knowledge. Yeah. Deep, deep knowledge. Oh, yes. And it's a good that, thing you caught me before I retired is all. <laughs> but the thing was that this was not a gab fest. We had a committee that when Susan went to work, we worked. And the people who did the work, Tom and Lisa. Lisa, very much. And so they are to be congratulated for the fact that there were many changes that occurred. And I think in what you have, are, yes, there's the statement of change, the second page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason necessarily to, to, read it, to read it through except to note that uh, there are any number of laws that were brought into being because they exist where we had to update. There were new laws that had to be taken into mm -hmm. account and the very few changes that are meaningless are about two. So there is a typo and there's a failure to mention a holiday. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, this revision went through um, one, two, three, four, okay. four sessions, four different revisions. Mm -hmm. And each time it was Sue who would say, wait a minute, <laughs> we're missing this, we're not that. And not only that, but what Sue would do is even uh, in looking at something like the harassment policy, which had mm -hmm. to be updated, mm -hmm. she was willing to volunteer to give harassment training to employees right. around the town. Right. Sue also noted that there were posters that are required by law to be presented where mm -hmm. your employees work. Mm -hmm. She made certain that these posters existed, and then if they didn't, she got them. Well, I mm. sent them to Tom. Tom took care of all of that, but um, there so. are some things that need to be posted any place we have so workers. At, so at, at this point then, front. Sue, why don't we turn it over to you and let you speak to the question of what you Sure, see. Sure. Well, if you just go through the changes briefly, um, there were just some changes that needed to be made to the uh, EEO policy and the anti-harassment policy because there are some uh, uh, categories, protected categories that were not included in your um, in your policies, and we mm -hmm. upgraded your anti-harassment policy to be more reflective of the yeah. um, model policy by the um, MCAD, so that's, that's a, <coughs> a recommended change. Um, we 
put in your alcohol, we put together an alcohol drug free workplace policy, updated that. Um, you do not currently have random testing. Um, uh, we we decided that we're going to think about you know, mm -hmm. putting in random testing after the handbook has been distributed. We're going to notify people and then give them a, I believe we decided to give them a period of time before mm -hmm. we would actually implement it. Is that, is that how we decided it? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Because Could I, could I add a moment? Oh, please, please. There was mention please. on television tonight of a new law that oh, was just passed about in Connecticut. Marijuana. In Connecticut. Oh, I thought it was here in the state. It was Connecticut. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, no, wait, it wasn't passed. It was uh, <coughs> proposed. Proposed, yeah. Yeah, that, that you can't ask about. Yeah. Uh, you can't terminate somebody for legal marijuana use. Right. Um, off, off site. That's right. Yeah. I there, agree with that. There, there I agree is, with that. I don't know how you feel about that, but it, I agree with well, that. Well, I think it's right. probably going to become law if it isn't. <clears throat> yeah. But it, it did make. It presents the, a problem for some employers, but. And that's the point it was making was that. As long as it did not affect the use, it did not affect your ability to do your job the next day or right. the same day. Right. Well, the problem about that is that the, the standard urine test with drug analysis thing, marijuana shows up for 60 days, what it's 30, 60 <laughs> days, whereas cocaine and heroin show up for 24 hours. Right. And, yeah. and, and then they're gone out of the system. Yeah, and I'm like, those it. are the ones that you want yeah. to really prohibit, yeah. whereas the one that everybody gets caught on is the marijuana from two months ago. Yeah. The, piece about, the piece about the random testing, though, is that if you observe somebody who is acting as if they're under the influence, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can still send that person for testing. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's reasonable suspicion. You can still send that person for, for testing. And if you have somebody who is in a safety-sensitive position, you can schedule them for random tests. Now, mm -hmm. if the new statute comes through that says you can't terminate somebody for all... That's right. You off, can't for doing it in his own house. For that, I believe that, that exempts... Uh, employees who are under federal law, so that would that would not apply to uh, commercial driver's license. Right, just to your employees. CDL people. So mm -hmm. those could yeah. still be tested for random and could still be terminated if they tested positive. That's your decision. I'm mm -hmm. just saying yeah. that it, it's hard until they develop a, a more uh, reliable Test. testing for yeah. to determine whether somebody is actually under the influence yeah. of marijuana. That's the problem with OUI right now. Until too, they driving. come up with mm -hmm. until they come up with a. a, a a breathalyzer or something similar, right. um, then you're just kind of trying to go by what the test says and whether or not you want to follow the policy. So it's a, t it's a tough one. That's different from somebody who might have a prescription for yeah. marijuana. Yeah. There are particular protections there. We've already yeah. talked about yeah. that. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All of these changes. Um, you guys did all this work yourself? Yeah. Well, let, let, I want to make very clear the work was here. Well, no, we did well, yeah. uh, 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 Putting it into uh, written form was which, here. Uh -huh. Lisa was an And was editing was Sue. Who I mean, but but all, often, the work, often the work that gets done of this difficulty, we ha we do with FERCOG, and they have experts yeah. at FERCOG yeah. who go from town to yeah. town and, and help us work out yeah, that's, that's what complicated things. Yeah. And and but this was this is not a FERCOG deal, as far as I can tell. Well, you have luckily, here, not at all. luckily we have we have a very knowledgeable uh, person. It's a better be. work product yeah, than FERCOG. I think it might be. Yeah. 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 Well, I know nothing. I don't know municipal law in that in that respect. I really rely upon Tom and mm -hmm. um, uh, and others who have more more experience with municipal law, but in terms yeah. of the employment law, as long as it applies strictly to the employer, um, not necessarily a municipality, but mm -hmm. to the employer, then that, that area is an area that I used to know really well. And <laughs> my, my knowledge is going to go rapidly out of date now that I've retired. And the, the other thing that was significant was Sue was always to make certain she was not, not acting as town council. Right. Sure. And so she would, in our meetings, defer questions that Really belonged to town council, and mm -hmm. she would not answer. Because yeah, I, I don't represent the town; no. we're just mm -hmm. as a volunteer committee. So yeah. I wanted to be sure that that was clear. But it's huge, and and certainly the changes in personnel law over the last three or four years have, have been, been huge. Huge, yes. And and yes. you know, um, yeah. the, the the work that's required on a, on the new personnel policy is extensive. Yes. And, and you know, yes. you guys did a great job on this. Thanks. You know. So if we just continue on, the conflict of interest, that was something that um, Tom alerted us to um, in terms of the, um, yeah. what, what governs conduct of the public official. Right. Um, Corey, um, the Corey policy is a, is a state mandate. And we, the new one reflects the, the statutory requirements. Yeah. Um, there was a little bit of a confusion between 
the, what we call a, a WISP, a Witten Information Security Program, and a Data Security Policy. They're two different things. The mm -hmm. Data Security Policy is what your handbook says you're going to do if mm -hmm. there is a data breach. The Written Information Security Program is the protocol that you follow if there is that breach. So they're two separate yeah. documents. The Data Security Policy is in the handbook, but the WISP is something that has to be maintained and updated and follows your, your mm -hmm. particular protocol, your particular IT protocol, if mm -hmm. that should happen. Right. But it applies to every employer in the Commonwealth because you all have you know, Social Security numbers and dates of birth and driver license numbers mm -hmm. and things like that that mm -hmm. all are subject to, uh, to hacking, and so everybody has to have. And, and it's, it, I, it's not really limited to electronic uh, information, no. is it? So, no. So it, it has to do with how we maintain the files as yeah. well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a training policy, um, which we just kind of developed um, based on recommendations from uh, Tom and from various mm -hmm. departments. Um, so like the, the, only, the thing that I saw when, when and this was, um, this was pointed out to me because in a previous policy situation, that, that it's... Um, I was advised to do really specific numbers of days rather than anything that's subject to differing interpretations like when the 12 month begins or when is it a weekend on the last 12 oh, months interesting. and that like 365 days sure. is a better term than 12 months because there's no wiggle room mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. but um, well, and things like that but I, I would entertain that I, I have no objection to that well, oh. and and let me know um, <coughs> I think how we're envisioning this whole process working is that after we get done with this huge update that we will have regular annual updates yeah. where we yeah. can we can tweak things, and there are already things we have lined up that we want yeah. that we're not presenting here because we want to get this yeah. finished by the end of I don't the year. Need to be more or less. The works. No, and, no, 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 no. That's but fine. but um, that's a good point. Absolutely valid. But do be aware that anything else that you come up with Put that anything list. else we we will be yeah. making regular updates to this, preferably less. Um, yeah. And Sue's point was the law is changing constantly, yeah. and yeah. this has to change constantly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I think Tom, you've signed up to be um, to get the um, employment law alerts from my yes. former firm yes. because yeah. that uh, the firm that I used to Very work good. for has um, is a labor and employment law firm. That's all they practice, and so whenever there's something that is significant, mm -hmm. it'll Tom will get a copy of it and. Um, information about it and can put it on this list for consideration. That's great. And we also pay, the town pays dues every year to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees for the purpose of having a lawyer mm -hmm. that does this as time. well. Mm -hmm. And we get monthly, I get monthly bulletins, I never bring them, but I should bring them in and share yeah. them with you about... You get them that would actually help. Yeah, yeah, get them electronically yeah. and in the mail. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, that would help. Yeah, because the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the school law is significant. Yeah. Um, and I think what we decided to do with the training policy, if I'm not, you know, my problem is if you give me a coffee break, you have to retrain me. So um, I think we decided that we were going to do that in the form of a loan and then ask for the loan to be repaid. And that's the best way to do it um, in terms of the um, training oh, okay. cost. So there should be actually, I think I might have sent that to you if I didn't, I can, well, a loan document that you basically say, we agree to for we agree to forgive the loan mm -hmm. at the end of a 12 month period assuming that you're still employed by the town okay that is a, a slightly different than what we're currently using okay what are you currently doing it's, it's we have a form that people sign that that they that say they agree that they will pay it back yeah, yeah and that, that, that probably is yeah. sufficient the, most of my clients used to do it in the form of a loan that was repaid but i can send you okay. the loan document in case you want to you, think about it i would just doctor pay mm -hmm. Um, you can't do that unless you have written permission from the employee and um, you can't bring them below minimum wage. So it's a problem if you're just docking the pay. That's why the loan piece works mm -hmm. out because you've got a promissory note and the person says, I understand that I'm being loaned this amount of money <coughs> and that at the end of this time, if I, um, if I leave before 12 months, I have to pay the loan back. And if mm -hmm. I leave after 12 months, then you'll forgive the loan. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you the loan document. Mm -hmm. um, just, just so everyone's mm -hmm. clear, this uh, came up because we had difficulty getting EMTs and EMT mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are one of the few towns that does pay for EMT training for volunteers. And uh, that's, a, that's a bright spot. That's a, that's a gold star in our, in our uh, town, town policies. Um, but there was concern that people might abuse it. So uh, they thought that putting this in would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
have we attracted anybody to become an EMT this way? But oh, we have, sure. Yeah. yeah, I think people have, have joined who otherwise might not have. Yeah. You know, the, the cost of training is, what, $1,000? Close, close to a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, and it's pretty rigorous. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A, a yeah. Rigorous training. Yeah. Expensive. Yeah, uh, expensive. And we, you know, we didn't want a, a situation of, of that expense keeping people from being yeah. EMTs, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is important for us to have yeah. because we were having problem recruiting yeah. Yeah. EMTs. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we thought that was the best policy. Yeah. We put that in last year. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we added a domestic violence leave policy, which is, uh, has been required for several years now. Um, we uh, upgraded your FMLA leave policy. Um, Can you just back up a second? Oh, sure. We left something for the select board to determine. Right. Oh, whether paid leave should be exhausted prior to yeah. using unpaid leave. Oh, right, I didn't miss that. That's um, something so that you guys have to... Right. Yeah, so again... Um, Not now, but at we, some point. We, we, we will be identifying this sort of thing and packaging it up for um, uh, one of the regular updates. Yeah. And is this, this is a question for all the forms of leave? Or just this um, one in particular? I was just going to look. I, I think that we put it in... I think we have it in for the others as well. I was just going to take a look. Good for you, Bob. Um, just wondering. Yeah, it probably, probably has to be for all forms of leave. I would say. Yes. I don't know where leave is. Yeah, you can't. You can't do it for. Um, yeah, you require it for FMLA. So um, I I think that it should be required for all of your leaves, except you cannot require it for parental leave. That's a little tricky. Oh. Um, the statute does not let you do that, but um, but for all other forms of leave, you can. Mm -hmm. Let me just see what we decided to put in here. Yeah, we have in here that employees who take domestic violence yeah. leave must exhaust all paid leave. I mean, I would say that for mm -hmm. every leave that you have, okay. I mean, most people will anyway, because okay. they can't sure. afford to be absent without a paycheck. But this avoids sure. somebody taking a whole bunch of leave, God forbid they should have that circumstance with domestic violence, but taking a whole bunch of leave mm -hmm. and then deciding to take four weeks of vacation. Right. So, you know, you... you uh, yeah, it, yeah I, I, I would actually thing. say that domestic violence should have... Uh, 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 I think the way that we did it when it came in, in the school was we did a hybrid where the first few days were not exhausting your own per because when this is granted to somebody that is an actual domestic violence, like that you grant this to them when they're like in a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to, in addition to like healing enough to get out of the hospital to actually mm -hmm. have to make sure to take their lead, da, 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 that, mm -hmm. that, they, yeah. that the initial like emergency whatever should be mm -hmm. uh, a separate thing that they don't, that, that not personal and then it kicks in once it's whatever, but. Um, Understood that the issue with domestic violence leave is that it applies, it's such a broad statute. It applies not just to the individual who suffered the domestic violence themselves, but to all of their covered family members, spouse, fiance, individual who's a victim of a substantial dating relationship, victim who has child in common, the parent, step parent, child, step child, sibling, grandparent, grandchild, or guardian. So it's a pretty broad right. category. And, and I remember that too, but it's like if, if you have, in order to help the people that really need to be helped, if you have to help other people too, that's not always such a bad thing. Um, well, it's totally yeah. up to you guys. Yeah. It, you know, it, yeah. there's no requirement that you do it one way or the other. But so. we don't need to decide it tonight. No, okay. yeah. but it's okay. yeah. well, it's in the policy as exhaust. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you, it's a, it can be changed. You might or change it. World. World. I, know, I have, have yeah. a note to, uh, yeah. to take it up. Okay. And, uh, the language that we did it for the, in the school. Yeah. Send me the language. Yeah. Send me the language. Thank you. So, as far as FMLA is concerned, um, the FMLA is a very, very complicated statute yeah, to administer. Mm -hmm. um, I said that I would do a quick FMLA training for Tom. I do teach a master class in that, and I would do a, a half a day session with him and just kind of blow through it and make sure that he's up to speed with managing it because it is quite complex. Okay. That's thank you. Um, we changed minor change to yeah. holidays. Yeah. Corrected maternity leave act does no longer exist. It's the parental leave, and there's some mm -hmm. new language there. Um, we added sister-in-law to bereavement leave. Again, mm -hmm. pregnant workers fairness act. That's another new statute. Yeah. And then retirees health insurance. We decided to offer um, dental insurance. But Tom, did you look at the SPD for the for the policy by any chance? Um, Jan says everybody's covered. 
I'd be really more comfortable if, if we looked at the SPD, uh, the summary plan description. Yeah, policy. well, I think Jan is confident in that. Okay, because I, usually, I can, usually eligible employee is defined, mm -hmm. and usually eligible um, participant is defined, and unless it specifically is defined to cover retirees, you can't do it. So that's what I just want to be sure. Well, if she sure. says it's if she says retirees are included in the in the dental plan, then that then I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. And we fix the sick leave again, accrual. You could just ask her to show you where in the policy it says that it's okay. Just look at the language. I, yeah. They hate to promise something that we can't really legally deliver. Yeah. Makes me anxious. Um, and the last was sex leave, which... Yeah, sex leave. Is. Apparently we were doing it, um, yeah. we put in the wrong accrual time, yeah. so... So, there it is. It's a gift. Well, one, one day after you, Christmas. You know, I'm, I'm, and I it was, keeps growing. It keeps and it keeps getting, growing. I was impressed, impressed by how clean and neat your work was and just how... <laughs> no, no, like, because I, I'm, I'm on these committees, too. And I'm, I'm actually, I've been head of the committee now for years. And when I, like, take a look at the end of, like, the year of what we've done and you yeah. just see, like, the... I mean, you've tried to make heads or tails of it. And it's... Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like your thing was so neat and clean, and there wasn't any punctuation that was off. That your line, your your your, your lines crossing out always ended in the exact right place, and never went one <laughs> well, space oh, no, we further. Have, we have to give Lisa this complete Lisa. total credit. Uh, for that. I mean, we would make a change in the in the in the in the committee meeting, and I would rip off a piece of paper and say, "Here, Lisa, put it in," and she would do it. So she's she's yes. been amazing, absolutely Excellent. valuable. And I think you don't know, Lisa is a former lawyer. So yes. it yeah, is. She knows we the have Sue. We have. She knows Lisa. the significance of action. So I have OCD. We do. We do. We, and we can't, we can't let the so comments. My, yeah. my children gave me, my daughter gave me a, a mug for Christmas that says, I am sitting here silently correcting your grammar. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I want one that of those. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'll, I'll note that this is uh, something that I've actually been working towards for five years. <laughs> not, not, yes. not, in, in, not specifically, but this, we will, we will take this, we will distribute it to all of the employees yeah, and, an and have them um, return to us a separate sheet which says that they have read it and understand it and begin the process of building the files correctly and which we've we've done in a kind of a haphazard way since I've gotten here, but this is this is going to be an, an orderly process to uh, have us uh, come up to um, all manner of compliance. Mm -hmm. Great. There was a question just to Tom and I just talked about this and Sue. Um, this is simplified legal language and mm -hmm. we're fairly easy to understand for some people, not so easy for others. And the question is, a person could sign without really understanding. Mm. And uh, Tom had the feeling that he would like to volunteer. This is really a function of human resources people, but we don't have that. But if he, he volunteered to sit down with a future employee and simply go through this and help the person understand if he doesn't or she doesn't. Well, as the process of onboarding. So yeah. as we're bringing someone on board with the town, um, we, we don't have a, uh, a good formal structure for that. We, we know everything that people have to do, but they don't necessarily see that it's part of a structured plan. So mm -hmm. part of that would be to um, let them know everything that's in it so that they're, yeah. Um, yeah. they're so that I'm more confident that they're aware yeah. <laughs> of, and, of, and of what's in it. Yeah, yeah that's critical. Um, <sighs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if you gave this document, you, you'd say, and there will be a quiz. And what, <laughs> yeah. what, you know, the opposite of what we usually what do. Do. What degree of responsibility are we taking for somebody understanding yeah. the, you know, the yeah. personnel yeah. policy? When they sign, if, they, if, they yeah. take the responsibility, yeah, yeah. but I, I, I would like to be confident that there's, that there's yeah. uh, something behind that act. Well, so. you know, I think certainly. the form says that not only do, have I have received, but I agreed to read, and I agreed to ask if I have questions and all that sort of stuff. So you're, I think yeah. the acknowledgement yeah. form is pretty, yeah. covers, covers you have, very I thoroughly. I have read and understand exactly. the yes. policy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And agree to ask, oh, yeah. and agree yeah. to ask if I don't. 
Oh, I'm going. Okay. Okay. And I'm I've never seen it go that far. Yeah, I think mine says that. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Thank that's you. the important part because these things, all ambiguities, are resolved against the town when it counts. Yeah. And so it's really good to get these questions from people to have them because yeah. that's sort of the things that you need to tighten up yeah. usually, sometimes. And it should be the wife also who has, can say something about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, well thank, one, thank one you for The one concern I did have, more. and I know, Phil, you've weighed in on this a little bit, but um, the one concern I do have is that um, the employees of the town, the, the employees of the town include um, those individuals who work at the grammar school. Yes. And the contract, the way, the way labor law works is if there's a union contract, that covers the things that the union con contract covers. And if it is silent, then the policies of the employer apply. However, the school does not have policies as comprehensive as this, and that causes us some concern. So we just lay that out there. There's not, uh, I think we, the FMLA policy isn't compliant. The, and there's a whole bunch yeah. of policies there that are not compliant, and they're not the educational policies, which is what no, that I'm, statute covers. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's I think the personnel policies, which is mm -hmm. different. I, I saw a lot of what you wrote and were concerned about, and I, I some of that is just uh, the nomenclature and the actual like uh, paragraph headings in our p policies are mm -hmm. mishmashes from 20 years on now, and mm -hmm. and um, they make no sense to, mm -hmm. to to someone trying to figure out what you know. They, they just go they just go from letters to numbers back to letters to, to mm -hmm. and and I think you saw the comments that I right. forwarded from. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but but so those are just our concerns because the, mm -hmm. the the entity that's going to be sued is not the school committee. The entity that's going to be sued, right. sued is the town. But we do have one of you on that's advising us, and and sounds just like you when they say when they <laughs> yeah. say that, and and um, we uh, we uh, I was told last year that ours was one of the best in the state from mm -hmm. from for a regional school that they actually do look at all these in Boston and the Desi whatever and there's somebody that. Make sure that they're. Whatever. That may that may very well be, but I think we looked at them and I didn't find that they were compliant. So that was, that's just my two cents. Mm -hmm. I want to get you. To well, if, 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 if there's a conflict, if there's a conflict between the personnel policy for the school employees and the, the town itself, okay, which which one takes precedence? Would it be the town? Well, it, if the if the town if this personnel if this handbook is not distributed to. Um, the school department employees, then they're not bound by it. And the information that's in it doesn't help them. So, and I'm just making things up yeah. now because as I said, I can't no, remember no, exactly where the deficiencies they're not bound were. By it. But so let's say, let's say that your FMLA policy is good here, mm -hmm. but the FMLA policy that's currently being followed by the town of Conway school department employees, um, school employees is not deficient. Well, if you, if that means that it gets screwed up, you guys are on the hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the how fact do we, that you have a good one doesn't make any difference. How do we reconcile that? Well, well I, we, we we have been forwarding information to Phil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I can, think is for the first time there is this yeah. go between between a member of the school committee as well as our committee, and that's significant. All right, so why won't the school well, the, committee the, just accept our policy? Well, there are four towns. Uh, well, there there are a well, number no, of areas where it was just to yours. You can have one Holidays, that applies yeah. vacations, just to you. Know, all of that and, and there are some things in here that won't. Yeah. That 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 will conflict with what the town employees at the school do. They have different rules. Like it, it, it gets really days. complicated because some of our school, some of our town employees actually work one day a week at, at our school, or half a day at our school, half a day, and so. If they're attached to a specific special needs student, they go with that student to different places. So you could, um, and there's administrators that that are covered by us when they're with us, and they're covered with enough. But they they work some of the time at another school. There's, it gets really right. really complicated. All right. So what you're what you're saying is that the the policies are non reconcilable. And it's also statutory that employees of school department, um, the the school committee makes the policies for those educational like, policies. No. The la yeah, the language in there, if you look at the statute, it actually says educational Right, but policies. that's really broadly interpreted to be anything related mm -hmm. to I, I would, educational I would say that to protect the town. All right, so how do we make these things independent? Um, 
So get her on the school committee. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. But um, seriously. Well, again, we've entered into communication. Yeah, we've entered into communication. I, I think one of the other problems is that the um, the district doesn't have an HR person. So the district does not have an does HR not person. have an HR no, they person. Lost, person. Lost. They were going to pay Patty Kavanaugh five thousand dollars more to take on the we entire did. HR oh, function. We did. That's crazy. Yeah, well, we did. That's crazy. So, so that, our so our district doesn't have an HR person. No, it does not. No. That's crazy. So it, I mean, I I think it's a, you know, my opinion is it's a big area of risk, but I <laughs> Terrible. I don't have, you know, I'm I'm not about to take on the district. There, there's don't. another question. That in, uh, the, the question of covering the the principal's secretary, the kitchen help, and the custodian. All the non-union people. Non-union yes, people. Right. They have their own set of policies. Do, and is that done through the superintendent's or supervision? But how do they have their own set of policies? The, their, the policy right. manual is actually divided into four different groups. <coughs> right. Um, which is Union 38 teachers, Union 38 yeah, yeah. instructional assistants and non-union personnel, and then Frontier, and then front blah, blah, blah. and then there's also policies that are in a, only um, contractually obligated, that, and there's also policies that are written down elsewhere that, um, yeah. Um, it needs attention. It needs uh, attention. It needs a lot of it, attention. Say, the, the, the administrators. We uh, well, the good news is I've been the, pre the the chairman of the committee for years now, and I'm really ready to give that duty up to anybody. Why, Sue? <laughs> Sue, Sue would be like perfect for it. I, I, and would I'd be, be happy to consult with the school committee and with the district. I don't want to. I mean, as I say, I don't, I don't pretend Actually, to know municipal law, and I don't want to step you, in that. If, but. if I can get your email, I can email you when our meetings are. Where, like the first organizational meeting is coming up at the end if of January. If this is going to be on the agenda, yeah, I, I that's all it is. Sure. That's a, it's that the would policy be, subcommittee. That's great, sure. and because they're open to the public, they're on, they're listed, and that would be sure, great. We'll talk, because because, email, because Sue was the one who warned at our meeting. Wait a minute, you know, case law is the teachers sue the town. Yeah, and that's she what that's happened. suddenly the I've red seen, flag. I've seen the, I've seen the I've seen the cases, you know, in the reporters mm -hmm. um, that this teacher sued the town for discrimination, or this teacher sued the town for for retaliation in the FMLA, and all that. For what happened stuff in the happens. school, completely outside of the select board yeah. normal mm -hmm. town work. Yeah. yeah, well, that's why it's been set up. Yeah. But they are your employees. So but you're there. You're when you have a group of a hundred and something employees in one building, you're going to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> um, try to will. make sure you have um, enough protections to yep, yep. to minimize the damages. Yeah. Uh, just so everyone knows, uh, the administrators for the four frontier towns have been talking with the superintendent about the possibility not only of having the school have an HR position, but having the towns be able to share in that person's expertise and, in fact, work uh, so that, um, you know, right now, HR for me occupies you know as little space as I can get away with while I'm doing everything else and what we really need is somebody who yeah. who is yeah. is focused now and Lisa has been taking up a tremendous amount of, of work in that area um, but it would help to have somebody who then could be whose work could be shared mm -hmm. um, right now they don't have anyone working on HR so saying that half of their time would be you know, 20 hours a week would, would be spent um, for the schools would be 20 hours that they don't have now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with the towns, you know, calling as needed and the person being able to do personnel file audits and trainings and, and all of that kind of stuff. It, it, it would, it, it's one area in which regionalization might, might really help. Mm -hmm. um, we're more or less informally kicking around the idea of one of those uh, community compact regionalization and efficiency grants for uh, a study to see just what that position might look like, mm. what its job that, description that, that's might That's a good be. idea. Good idea. Okay. That when the, the problem with all that is when we're, we get 16%, we're 16% of the budget, or 14% of the budget, we're 14% of the budget, so we get, if we go in the, 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 the that, time. We, if, we, if we go in using our standard percentages, we get the shared employee fourteen percent <laughs> of the time, which is not even a full day. And Deerfield gets them three full days and whatever. So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll do yeah. it by number of employees. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number of town employees. Anyway, okay. so um, 
And thank you for your patience Sue, while thank, we work. Thank you, work David and yeah. Sue, and, well. and thank the rest of your committee. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, Bob's, Bob's, Bob's still on, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, he is. Okay. Yes. Please thank Bob as well. Yes. And, uh, I mean, you guys do a great job. What kind of stuff? Well, we thank you for your support and listening. We, we, you know. Uh, and and I, w uh, I would ask for a formal vote on accepting this uh, new personnel policy. I'm motion motion. to approve it. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Thank you Thank much. You. Thank you. Work. My pleasure, Sean. Nice to see you. Good to see you Thanks, too. Sean. Yeah. Thank you, David. Say hi to Gary. Well, I will, absolutely. And sir. Thank you. Uh, we meet on Susan, we meet uh, on the sixteenth, I think. I have it on my I think I have it on my calendar. Yeah. Next week. Yeah, Wednesday Yeah, exactly. Let me just be sure. Yeah, I think it is uh at yeah. is that seven? It, I think it was at 6.30. Because they just reformed the policy uh, committee. Let me check. I, I asked let me to, just make sure that I have it. I was like, I don't, I've been doing this enough. I've been tearing whatever. And I asked to get, no, no, and no. I asked to get off of it. And they not only didn't let me off of it, they let me tear it in there. Let's assume it's 7. No, 7.30. 6.30? 7? I don't know. 7. 7 works better than I can feed Gary Fenton, which is always important. Huh? Or it's half of all the negotiating committees. And I asked them not to. And Tom, I'll send you that loan document just so that you can see if you want it. If you want to use it or not. Sounds good. Tom, do we have any items not anticipated? 48 hours in advance. Uh, family of elders. This, this was so, sort of an, anticipated. And let me just point out that at the very end, um, we, we actually don't need and probably shouldn't discuss it tonight because it's not on the agenda. But I think you all have copies of. A proposed rewrite of the personnel committee bylaw in yes. the yeah um, we do and um, if you need people to come in to talk about that anymore it's it's more or less this is this is what made sense to people um, as as we were uh, taking on other things than the employee handbook right. um, and their proposals so um, I'll, I'll, it'll it, it will come up as an item for town meeting. Sure. Um, yeah. But I just thought I'd mention that you have it now. Okay. And that there's two copies, one with the red line and one with changes accepted, but the new wording in blue. One of the exceptions is at the top, there's a chunk of blue, yeah. and it, we're just moving something up from the, the purpose of the committee from, late, from further down to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tom. All right. You have an update for us, Tom? Yes. Yes, I do. Four committees and boards. Uh, the planning board is considering a common driveway issue that may require the advice of town council. A resident is requesting valuation on two building lots that are on a private road that has three dwelling units on it, though they were built before the common driveway bylaw was passed in 1993. The question is whether two other back lots are buildable based on the common driveway bylaw. If the planning board cannot determine that themselves, they will need to engage town council on the question. Sounds like a good uh, idea. Okay. So that and that's something that um, you know might eventually turn into a more an article as well if we need to clarify our our zoning. Um, as I noted, the personnel committee is considering proposing changes to the personnel section of the bylaws, uh, which you have which you have gotten. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, Dave Chichester was chosen as the Recorder's Citizen of the Year. And the Select Board proclaimed December 18th, 2018 as David I. Chichester Day in the town of Conway, uh, which I think he, uh, he found very, very uh, touching. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, in departmental news, the town office copier is not functioning well. I've gotten quotes on new copiers, some of which are under $5,000. So I did not submit a request for the, for the Capital Planning Improvements Committee, uh, but I am including it in the budget, in my own budget. Isn't this a relative new copy? It's five years old. Oh, um, five years old? That it, old already. And, okay. and it has had increasing trouble with paper wrinkling on legal-sized documents, which, as you know, we go through a lot of around town meetings. Yeah, right. Sure. Um, so it's... We're feeling that, um, and we've had the guy in. You know, what's, the, what's the brand? Works for a while. This is Officio. 
Officio. Officio. I never heard of Officio. A F I C O. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at alternatives, but I'm I'm planning on just including it in my budget, which will bump it up, and it'll need explanation. But um, okay, uh, we can get it for less than five thousand yeah. dollars, so that's good. Uh, the highway department has had some trouble mowing the Bigelow field. For conservation reasons, they can't mow till after October 1st, and it was a wet fall, which makes it impossible to mow highly sloped areas without digging in and running the risk of overturning equipment. Mm -hmm. We are aware of the problem and are seeking a long-term resolution. This is uh, a matter of some concern to some residents. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not as though we don't know that it's a problem, but uh, right now it's difficult to do anything about it. We just need dry falls. That's all. We'll yeah. Mandate that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll make it a bylaw. <laughs> there you go. Uh, for budget and town meeting, um, let me start at the bottom. Uh, out of 33 budget worksheets to be submitted, we have 20 as of today, though the dead want line was this past Friday. Uh, Lisa sent out reminders, so I expect we'll have most of the major budgets soon. Uh, we actually have all of the major budgets, so now it's it's a we'll smaller lose. budget. Okay. Uh, and the Franklin County Technical School offered to come and present their budget at a select board meeting. I mentioned that earlier. Um, right. They're coming on January 28th. <coughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, here's some here's some numbers. Uh, the highway superintendent submitted five requests to the capital improvement planning committee. The board of health is also proposing a new compactor for the transfer station. Uh, for highway, one is a new six wheel truck with plows. That's the largest item for $200,000. Also a new mini excavator for 45,000, a new compact loader for 20,000, a new one ton pickup for 20,000. A lot more than twenty. Yeah, these, these are these, these are including trade ins, trade in values. A uh, new tractor with cab for six thousand uh, dollars. These total two hundred ninety one thousand dollars with the board of health compactor. That's three hundred eleven thousand dollars. The fire department uh, is also asking for eighty five thousand dollars to replace. Uh, their stock of self-containing breathing apparatuses, SCBA. They're not underwater, so they're not scuba, but they are uh, necessary to breathe when you're in the middle of a lot of smoke. The current balance in the capital stabilization fund is $405,085, with liabilities against it currently of almost 80000 leaving about 325000 available for expenditures. So if the current requests were fully funded through capital stabilization, we would be $70,000 in the red that we usually put in 125000 each year, um, which would leave us with 54000 Not a lot, um, but it would... We're, we're, on the whole, not in the red. The other good news is we have uh, uh, some free cash that we can turn towards yeah. um, capital expenses. I don't know what other money expenses are out there yet, um, but and there and there will be some. Uh, but um, it, it's not terrible news, but it's it's stretching us. Uh, so you at have this. this you have this. Is it's, it's all. Approved already. No, I'm just saying that, that this is this is like the uh, what's been submitted. This is yeah. So could, everything that's been submitted, this is this is where we are. Because I saw emails going back and forth between the head of the uh, capital improvement planning committee and yourself about his analysis and uh, whatnot. And I think uh, one of the things that I remember was that. When it, and, and we've heard this from the finance committee last year too. Sort of, uh, to what extent is their judgment important in their in their you know in, in their job? And that um, you know, and, and I, I understand sort of you don't want them substituting their judgment for the select board's judgment. And, yes. and but at the same time, 
they're not potted plants. And so, like, if you take it to an extreme and they're asked about it, like a request for something like a hot tub that goes in the back of a town vehicle, you would hope that they would say, no, that's completely outrageous. And, and that, that you, want, you want them passing their concerns on to the select board. They're advisory. They're not decision makers. Right. Okay. They're, we want they're supposed to put the request into a spreadsheet, look at them, uh, advise us, we make the final decision. But share concerns that they have. Well, you know, of course. They're, they're advisory. Yeah. And, and they, can, they can, you know, I'm sure Ron would be happy to answer whatever questions they have. Uh, the main thing is, is, that, is that we really need a, a solid capital plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Ron has his current replacement schedule up on the website. That's not included in anybody's capital plan right now. He's had to do it uh, for himself, um, so he knows, you know, what he'll be asking for and plan. And that's all up on the website. But um, that, that's the that's the thing really driving driving me is that the, the the primary thing is to take the request in and know whether or not there's enough money over time, or whether we should wait a year for this one, or that that kind of um, structural decision is really important because uh, things have shifted from the original plan that they started off with a couple of years ago. Uh, we haven't asked for some things. We are asking for some things we didn't ask for. Um, and uh, they need to be relying on current information, current inventories. Um, I don't think the, the, the Board of Health compactors aren't even on the capital plan. Uh, the fire department equipment is not on the capital plan. So um, all of these things need to be there so that we know if we can afford something this year or not. And that, that's a level, you know, that's a, it's a higher level kind of um, way of looking at it. But we need that as a basis. You know, then we can start, you know, asking, you know, more particular questions and, well, maybe you can do a less expensive truck or something like that. That's, I mean, that's what, you know, whether you can afford it or not is one thing, whether it's appropriate and really necessary at all times, you know. I, I look at something like 10 breathing apparatus, like did we ever have a fire that needed 10 people to have breathing apparatus at the same time? I don't know. Is that how that works? Do you, do you, uh, that that is, well, that is one of the a question one of the that questions the select board yeah. who yeah. appoints him can ask. Uh, that That's, you know, that's... Um, that's an oversight right. function, and, and the select board oversees all of the department heads. So the, when the select board meets with these people is definitely the time to ask all those questions. Okay, I'll try to write them down. Is this an especially big um, capital budget for Ron? It's a lot of things um, I, I at mean, once, we're using but he knew it was coming, and he did express it uh -huh. last year. So we're using three years worth of stabilization money, you know, next year. And and that that happens. And and the reason for keeping that spreadsheet up is it has a running total at the bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we add this much, and you go out and maybe ten years, <coughs> it, it says minus fifty thousand dollars. So you say, oh, okay, we got to bump it up. I've been saying for several years now that we need to put more than one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in because that number was based only on vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, and and. Um, some equipment, but it was not based on everything that costs five thousand dollars or more. Yeah. And you know, Board of Health comes in, Fire Department comes in with things that that have never seen a capital plan. So yeah. uh, that that's my main concern. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. Um, select board comments. We have any? Oh, comments? you forgot to, about the the tank lining, which was very good. It got started, oh, and uh, do it. it went. St oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, make it just, a select he just, board He just comment. said you're done. You just said yeah, you're done. All right, so, well, yeah, I, 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 I was going to. It was add good. Something. It's a good thing. It was, I was going to add something, but but he please make the comment. It's as happening. The school and the way that I saw the whole work schedule because there was not a day to waste, literally, and it was just the schedule was seamless, and it was, um, uh, you know, and it's all it was uh, just it's in today. Today was the day that it well, uh oh, there has been a hitch. Oh boy, just okay. want to go and pat him yeah. on the back. I was patting him on the back. Um, we thought that everything was going to go fine. And what they said was, oh, well, it looks as though the water leaked behind the liner. So we need to dry out the tank. And that's going to take extra time. 
Well, I assumed from the beginning that if their cleaning thing that they had put the liner in over was leaching through and getting into the water, that the water was also leaching out. And you don't, the reason you have the water, the reason you have the liner is to keep the water away from the concrete tank. Sure. And they're saying, oh, why don't you just um, forget the liner for now, we'll come back in the summer and do it. Uh. And I'm thinking, the whole reason we need a liner is because we're concerned about the integrity of the concrete. <sighs> and why would we take the risk? So I sent a note back saying, Oh, well, if Mass Tank Inspection is willing to cover the liability, if something happens at the tank over the next six months, that's fine with me. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you know, um, that the reason we're having it relined is because you need a liner. You don't want the water in direct contact. They would be contact putting water the in concrete. the tank right up against the... Water right in the concrete the rather concrete than wall? having it be lined. And the concrete yeah. wall has got their... No, and we're not sure. In it. Well, that's a risk too. That that uh, the solvents may have may have uh, migrated into the concrete, which you know the the chances are that most of that is gone now. <laughs> we know that we know that it's been decreasing, so that's not a huge thing. But but to come out and say that that you know they didn't expect that the lining was compromised. When the whole point was that the lining was compromised, right. because they didn't let it dry out and their and their solution leached through it, seems mm -hmm. to me to be not very um, well thought out. Yeah. So that was today's email. So okay. is that admitting uh, that they don't have time to do it? I, th they were saying, "Oh, we don't have time to do it. We have fans going in it now." Um, and, and again, my response was, if they're willing to take on the liability, if the tank fails... So it's not just the liability for that, it's the, it's the cost, which is a significant cost of the bottled water and the water tests. Well, test, well we, the, we, would, we would be able to use the water um, <clears throat> because they would have stripped it of everything that's in it. So that includes the solvents. Um, and, but but my question is to the integrity of the tank itself, because mm -hmm. that's why we're having it lined. Because hmm. okay. you don't want... Right. Because our water's hard and it eats concrete. It, it might... It, just yeah, the water or it might, eats might, concrete. It might seal the cracks as it went out, but... And, and, <laughs> and, and you haven't gotten a response to that yet? No. no. Okay. All right. Next chapter, then. Clear as mud. That's usual. All right. Any other we're, comments? We're... <laughs> okay. Next item is mail. All right, we got a, um, a memo from the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District. And the important thing in here is that uh, Conway now has around $48,000 in monthly federal VA payments being made to approximately 34 Conway residents. Uh, this is for... Um, uh, service-connected injuries, low-income, and survivor status benefits. Okay. That's their uh, FY18 yeah. report. Uh, we have a letter from the Asheville Police Department uh, addressed to the Honorable Board. Uh, this is from the police chief, and he said, I would like to express uh, my appreciation for the mutual aid assistance provided by Conway Police and Fire Departments for the Ashfield incident on Tuesday, December the 4th. Conway Police Officer Randall Williams responded to the scene and stayed to assist during the entire call. Officer Williams' supported during this incident was greatly appreciated. Um, Conway Fire Department was requested as manpower was needed at the scene. Chief Bob Baker, Deputy Chief Ron Hawks, Firefighters Doug Dean, Dakota Dean, Demma Vanderheld, Gemma Vanderheld, uh, Nick Vanderheld, and John Conant responded to assist. The Conway Fire personnel acted in a professional manner and treated the scene with the utmost respect and dignity. Uh, he finishes with, I am a firm believer that working together on neighboring communities makes a higher level of public safety. With these efforts, our community uh, continue to benefit in a positive manner. 
signed by the police chief, uh, Beth uh, Bazio. That's a very nice letter. Mm. They deliberately underfund their emergency services and depend on the charity of their good neighbors. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we're still following the FCC matter about um, mass access in terms of uh, the amount of money we'd be getting from uh, Comcast uh, if uh, the FCC ruling uh, goes through as planned. So we're, we're still, still waiting to see what happens on that. Uh, Senator Hines uh, sent us a letter uh, confirming that uh, uh, received, received our testimony for the, the uh, Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in opposition to the proposed expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. And he is thanking us for being aware, uh, for making him aware of our position. Uh, it's from Senator Hines. And Comcast has sent us a letter that basically uh, gives us the rundown of covering the cost of covering the areas that are currently not covered at this point in time. Have you seen this, Bob? No. All right, why don't, why don't you take a look Great. at that and handle, handle yeah. that, okay? Uh, and that's it for mail, okay? So this is something we explicitly requested from Comcast. Yes, it is, yes. And since you are the knowledgeable one on that, why don't you take a look at it and uh, um, respond back to them if, if so necessary. Is, you can see why they didn't do this, huh? Yeah, the, the select board jointly wrote a letter, so this is a response yeah. back. So if you do respond, it should probably go through we, the board. Yeah, we asked them for that information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also got a, a calendar from uh, a Senator Neal, which uh, we all got one. Oh, I hope he's not our senator, is he? Uh, he's just our congressman. Right? Uh, our, our, con <laughs> yeah. our congressman, right. Yeah, our congressman. Bad enough. Oh, come on. Okay, next thing on the agenda is announcements. We have any announcements? No uh, announcements. There, there was that there was that FERCOG transportation thing that's actually an announcement. They're having a meeting. Um, yeah, no, it, it was it, it was uh, it's it, it you just had your hand on it on the other other uh, there was this it, announcement it's, it's, it's the colored colored flyer. There was that there, announcement you there, there's on a now. meeting on um, there's a colored flyer. It, it's a about colored flyer in the other pile. In this pile. Yeah, just saw it again. It keeps. There we go. That colored flyer. There's a meeting. Uh, oh no, that's the beacon. Yeah. Sorry. There is. Uh, it was in the mail. Okay. It should have been an announcement. Here it is. Nope. Right. You want to announce it? So, I think we talked about that already. Yeah, oh, we, we already did this. One that applies to everybody else. Oh, oh you already did that. Oh, yep. okay. There's a, it's a transportation meeting for regional needs at the COG on January. Uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's at uh, Irving Senior Center on January 8th. It's sure. at the, um, the FER COG on the 9th, yeah, from 12 so to 1. If anyone wants to okay. talk about their transportation needs. Regionally, yeah. All right. There's this letter we got from Heinz too about uh, short-term rentals. Uh, right. The yeah. B and B's. Or? Yep. Yeah, they're working on uh, some sort of a uh, an agreement on that. It's going to be an amendment to the bipartisan collaboration between the House, Senate, and Governor Baker to reach a compromise uh, on that situation of short-term rentals. And that uh, was just put out on the 21st. And the governor has 10 days <coughs> to sign it. Or not. Okay, any announcements? We have any announcements, Tom? Anyone else? No, no that, that okay. transportation thing was an announcement, but that's okay. all. 
Um, next meeting is January the 7th here at 6 p.m. It's where every Monday night from now on till yeah. the uh, And it meeting. actually won't be here. It will be across the street. At the town hall. Okay. Because we will... Uh, um, what we've done in the past and what I've proposed to the Finance Committee is the same arrangement um, of having a select board business from 6 to 6.30 and then a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 to hear uh, departments present their budgets. Right. Okay. So can we, can we also get a joint meeting with the Festival of the Hills Committee to talk about that idea to was it chapter 60 or whatever that thing was? The scholarship? Yeah, the scholarship to, to see, because that wouldn't cost the town money, but it would make them town employees and sort of whatever, but it was a way the, to... They're uh, not a committee anymore, but if the if the Festival of the Hills wants to meet with the select board, they should request a meeting. Yeah, can we do that? So that was, there. there's a way to get the Festival of the Hills to be sort of a town thing, but not cost the town any money in the budget? It's this chapter sixty. Uh, it was the de our they department. Used, they used to be a town committee. They're right. not a town committee. But it, it wasn't done. A pro it wasn't done proper. Like, the and I did talk to the Department of Revenue, and they gave me the lowdown. And it was the our, our guy. It was a chap. It's this chapter sixty that. that it's a way to have a town scholarship. So the select board would mm -hmm. appoint um, the people to give the the, the 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 town would receive money for a scholarship, and it would be given <coughs> out by the town. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just note that all, all public laws would apply. Okay, good. All right, if there's nothing else, we'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Yay. All in favor? Yay. Aye.